All right, I want to welcome back our returning viewers and thank all the new ones for checking in. Today we have Coach Ian Watley from Columbia College, the one in South Carolina, to talk a little bit about a school, the team, and what makes those experiences unique for inter interested athletes. This is a sort of speed dating approach to college recruiting to help coaches looking for race walkers and race walkers looking for coaches to get exposure to uh, the programs that they're looking for without having to reach out individually to the athletes and or the high school coaches and vice versa. Before we get started, just our daily reminder to subscribe to the channel so you're notified of new content when it's posted and leave comments on every video so we know what you think. Coach Watley, it's uh, great to see you again and thanks for joining us. Uh, you're welcome. It's great to be here. I, I'm really enjoying this series. I think it's uh, a great service for uh, for up and coming athletes to see what the coaches look like. All right. Thank you. So let's jump right in on um, our questions. Uh, tell our viewers and any potential recruits about your school and what makes it a unique environment for them. Yeah, uh, Columbia College is in Columbia, South Carolina, the capital of the state of South Carolina. Uh, it's a relatively small school, enrollment's about 1,500, um, which uh, means smaller class sizes, it means more flexibility. It's also a school that's very good at dealing with people who need um, IEPs type stuff. So if you've got ADHD, uh, anxiety meds, something like that, uh, school's really good on those things. Uh, the, you, you're also able to change your major fairly easily. I've discovered my daughters just recently graduated. I have twin daughters. Uh, they've been through Columbia College, which is how I ended up coaching there. Um, the school offers a, quite a good array of fairly rigorous academics, and that's the most important thing you should be looking at. I can assure you there are no professional race walkers, but you might be able to find a profession that allows you to race walk after you finish. Um, what's so great about Columbia College, apart from being small, everything's fairly compact on a campus that's a few miles out of, out of the center of the city, so it's not right down there with uh, USC in the middle of Columbia. Um, you're out towards the countryside, but the campus is self-contained. So you can literally put in a mile around campus. I know I've measured it with a wheel and uh, <laughs> we've got access to the tennis courts. In fact, um, <laughs> probably the most interesting thing about the program is the school was founded in 1854 and the track and field team is the most successful sports team on campus in the entire history of the school. And the most successful event group is the race walkers. <laughs> so unlike so many situations where you're a sort of afterthought, and everybody's going, you do what? You, you, you walk fast? You, you're sort of respected. People know you. You're one of the race walkers. Um, there's no football team to compete with. The school went co-ed uh, two, two and a half years ago. So we now have men's team as well as women's, and we're starting to get men's race walkers, um, looking for some more. Um, but of the school body being about 1,500, 1% 1 of the entire school body has race walked competitively for the school in the last year, which is <laughs> an amusing and strange statistic that I like to quote to people. So um, it's, it's a great environment for race walking. Uh, we've got it pretty well worked out. I have complete support from head coach for track and field, Justin Bishop. Because it's a Catholic, he's even attempted race walks himself. Don't worry, you can still beat him. So um, <laughs> it's great, it's nice to have that kind of leadership. Um, Susan Heiser, who's the US team coach, is also sort of a volunteer team mom. And the other thing you get, we were talking about this earlier, uh, is the fact that if you come down to Columbia College, you're in an area of the country where all of the races you do will be judged and judged thoroughly by national and master's level USATF judges. So 
it would be up to record standards. But also, if you have a flaw, you're not going to be allowed to slide by without knowing about it from these judges. So it's a pretty thorough vetting that you'll get down here. Yeah, I mean, those are all really, uh, you know, important things with a technique event like the race walk um, to get that feedback from coaches and then also the officials so you know that things are going to be taken care of. Um, give us a short history, a short history of <laughs> your coaching background and then uh, transition to how you integrate that into growing students into well-rounded athletes. Well, I remember when I was a lad. Um, it's, a ter it's terrible because how did you get into it? Well, I started race walking in 1973. We'll skip ahead a little bit. Um, I was a bioengineer at Loughborough University in England. I studied human biology and did research there and came to the States to help set up a research lab for a small shoe company called Nike, who was small at the time. Um, I worked in the athletic footwear industry for the last 40 years and have been uh, I was a race walker at college and um, have been in eight Olympic trials and spent 22 years on the national team. From about 1993 onwards, I was invited to the Olympic Training Center to be a team coach, to a uh, camp coach, would bring in elite juniors, elite seniors, whoever, and I would work as the coach for those things. Um, my daughters, twins went to Columbia College and I volunteer coached there and was brought on as assistant coach and um, I'm very technically oriented, um, nerdish, techno weenie. Uh, I have pieces of my trade lying around the office so if you're on the track or doing a race expect to be filmed and I will take clips from that and show you later what's going on. We have a four camera system set up in the gym. Uh, literally we have cameras around a treadmill with a double screen set up so that you can watch say the Olympic race walk down here and up on the top screen, I can click between screens and show you, look, your hands asymmetrical, it's coming up differently on one side. And that allows people to correct in real time. Uh, we do a lot of work with heart rate monitors. Uh, we're even using these, these little clickers. So some of that stuff to work on at step rates. The, <laughs> I also call them my little guinea pigs. Um, this is an Arwex. Uh, I think I showed you this Saturday. This yeah, is this it. the first time this is being seen live. First on, on, on live video. television. <laughs> what is it? It's a box for a mouse to sleep in. No, yeah. um, it hooks onto a shoe and it, it uh, the accelerometers in it will measure loss of contact with the ground and transmit that through Bluetooth to a receiver. It's being developed by World Athletics through um, a group based in Spain that I'm part of that group. And um, we're trying to get it ready for prime time so that we can use it at the Olympics. The IOC have strongly suggested we go to electronic judging of uh, contact at least. So there's that. And then the other little toy, if you turn up, expect me to stick pins in you. Uh, we do quite a lot of lactate based training. So we do lactate threshold measurements. We literally take a little finger stick, measure the amount of blood lactate at different walking velocities and heart rates. And then we apply that in our training so that we're maximizing the physiological benefit. There's a, a famous paper by uh, Hagbert and, and Coyle uh, that looked at the primary predictors of performance in race walking and the number one predictor is not your VO2 max. It's not your maximum velocity over 100 meters. It is your velocity at lactate threshold. Uh, using that information, we can maximize people's performance at every race distance from 3K all the way up to 50K yeah. or 35K as the kids yeah. do. Today. So <laughs> sort of to for, for the people who are not as familiar with the science end of it, this is um, a way of using technology to help them better understand their bodies. And then they're able to take that and become more self-aware of what's going on during a race, because in races, you're not going to take your lactate. You're not going to stop at the middle, uh, you know, at the 1500 bark of a 3k and go, Oh, I need to, you know, poke my finger. Um, you need to figure that out as you're going along, but these are the kind of yeah. things that you're teaching them. 
Yeah, now, now that ties in in a couple of ways. One is perceived exertion rating. That is your psychological feeling of how hard you're working and how that relates to physiological measures, which oddly enough was what I researched at university that ended up getting me to the United States more than a few decades ago. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is that, that sports science is one of the courses that you can take at Columbia College. And so what we do... And, and I tend to explain these things in far more detail than I probably should, but I explain why we're doing things to the athletes. I believe that an athlete will perform much better and be more, will buy in more to a program if they understand that there's a, a, a rational, scientific, research basis for why I'm making them do this bizarre session of going fast on a treadmill and hopping off onto another treadmill at another speed and then hopping back to this one. And you can actually show them blood lactate dynamics and say, look, this is the research and this is, you know, this is Peter Thompson's work on it and this is why we're doing it. So it sounds nerdy, but if you're one of the sports scientists, you're going to love it because it's yeah. going to help you pass. And if you're not, you can at least listen to it and go, okay, that makes some sense. I see why we're doing this. I'm not going to be fighting against the coach going, why are you making us do this crazy stuff? So that's my basis for doing it this way. Okay. And so what are the important qualities that you look for in a potential recruit that when you're trying to identify somebody that you'd like to bring down to Columbia? Oh, uh, I think primarily it comes from the athlete. Do they want to be there? Uh, and that sounds crazy, but <laughs> of the I mean, yeah. <laughs> hey, that it really me. has what to be number get? one. I mean, <laughs> so, um, of the, I think I worked out thirty six people have race walked for me in the last four years at Columbia College, and only two of them came into the college already knowing how to race walk or that I hadn't coached. So they're either people I coached and they said, I'm going to Columbia, or we've gone from scratch, zero to 80, as it were. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got two that came from outside who already knew how to race walk. And I'm very happy to say we, we got them faster as well. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I, you know, to, for those who don't know, you know, we both judge all the pretty much all the same meets, and I've seen the change in in those athletes. Like the the technical change in them has been enormous. And and this is something I'd say. So other coaches listening know it as well. You've got four things we can work on. We can work on the physiology, which is the fitness, and that's what we tend to focus on if we come from a running background. Biomechanics, and that's technique. That makes a huge difference. It isn't just how legal you are are you within the rules yeah you've got to be within the rules clearly but how efficient are you you need to turn as much of the energy you can generate because of your physiology into useful forward motion so biomechanics is absolutely crucial often overlooked is sports psychology i actually think it's more important the psychological, the, the mental approach for race walking than it is for running, because you have this added stressor of judging. You know, how do you deal with it when somebody pops a yellow paddle in your face or you start seeing your number with a, one of the ever popular red dots next to it on a board? Um, how do you deal with that extra stress? And the other problem is psychologically pacing is more important in race walking than in running. If you make a pacing error by going out too fast or trying to finish too fast, having started slowly, your technique is much more likely to break down. So you have to have the mental wherewithal to control yourself in terms of pacing, to react appropriately to uh, yellow paddles and to react to pacing changes in the rest of the field. So you need to learn that control. And the other one is avoiding errors, which is, I suppose, experience. Um, and as coaches, we can help with that. Obviously, you know, we teach the teach the basics. Don't eat pizza 20 minutes before your race. You know, that sort of thing you should know already. But or, or, or a hot dog. Or, or <laughs> oh, I didn't know that one. Okay. No, th th that's not a good idea. <laughs> but then we've, we've, we've got stuff like, well, how do you deal with a really hot day and they're giving you water during the race? Have you ever experienced that? That's something else we work on. We want to make sure that anything that comes 
is something they've experienced in training. So we actually do stuff where we set up bottles at the side of the track on a training day and we say, right, I want you to practice going out into lane three mm -hmm. and picking up your own bottle because you're not going to be handed them in a race. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you think, well, that's a minor thing. You try doing it for the first time in a major race and see how messed up you can make it. Oh, yeah. No, we, yeah we, we've, so. we've both seen it. <laughs> and I, I know I've done it. I, <laughs> I, I, I had a, I had a water bottle one time. It didn't make it back to the table and it was a two and a half K loop. It was not pretty. Um, <laughs> so uh, next question, what are the goals that you set for individual athletes and the team on an annual basis and over a four year period? I've heard other people's answers to this, and I was sitting there going, "Ooh, my answer is going to sound really different." And and I really hope my 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 head head coach. There's there's no wrong answer. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, there might be if you were the head coach at Columbia, because my yeah. answer is the goal is for you to individually improve as much as you can over the entire course of your career as an athlete. I don't want people. I don't want people just peaking for conference or for nationals. I want a steady annual progression that maximizes the base building and allows people to be as good as they can get. And, and our goal is not, you know, it's, it's not conference. Uh, we, we scored what, 39 points at conference, which is as much as you can score at indoor. Mm -hmm. And we got to national indoor, we went one, two, four, five. Well, you can improve a little on that. It's not the goal. The next goal is going to be who, who gets to the Olympic trials from Columbia College? Who can make national teams? How good can you be? How good do you want to be? And if you come to me at Columbia and say, I want to have a go at race walking, I wasn't very good. I, I, I was, you know, I only just broke 20 minutes, but I really enjoy it. I'd like to have a go. That's the kind of attitude I'd like to see. If you've got the academics for Columbia College, you've, you've looked at the area, you come and look at the campus and you say, yeah, I like the social setup here. You've got all three legs of that stool, the race walking, the social and the academic, and they're all working for you. Then I'd like you to come and join us. Okay, awesome. So now the, uh, the, the question that you're dreading. Um, <laughs> It's a and softball. I, and a phone I a friend. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to phone. A, actually, you, you, you could phone your wife or you, or you could bring the kids down. Maybe they can answer this. Um, Disneyland or Disney World and why? Uh, Universal Studios because I'm a Harry Potter fan. Okay. Well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. well so, but if you had to choose. I'd, I'd stay in Florida just because it's cheaper. Okay. Oh, I, I have this I have this wonderful experience down there where I was called for a drug test the morning I was supposed to be going in, so I lost half a day. So I'd like oh. to go back and see the other things. <laughs> okay, especially at those ticket prices. Yeah. All right. Um, so we're going to wrap this up. Thanks again, uh, Coach Watley, for joining us. Uh, it was a pleasure chatting with you, and I uh, you know hope you have a great day. That's great. Thank you very much. And thanks for doing this. Appreciate All right. it. You're welcome. Bring the funk back. back.